Hello, folks, and welcome to Friend or Foe Series Heroic League. We've got some exciting matches going on today. First match of the day is going to be Pentakill, Teemo, Please, and the Wet Team uh, going up against each other. There is a ban penalty as we have got uh, Creon playing in for Ganondorfs. Uh, so that is going to be taking uh, the place of for Pentacle Teemo, please. I am your friendly neighborhood shotcaster, Sharogan, uh, and I have got Raptor joining me on the caster's desk today. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, a big shaking of the, wagging of the finger at PTP for break and lock -in. But, you know, I'm glad they at least got to play today. So, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see this game. I'm happy to watch these teams juke it out. Oh, absolutely. Feeling them duke it out. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into these bands. So we've got that ban penalty on Pentacle Teemo, please. They're choosing to use Vladimir uh, as their solitary ban. Great choice, I think, to take that away from Charu. Uh, he's a champion that is just absolutely devastating with, with his uh, quasi tankiness because of how much sustain that champion has can be really, really frustrating. Uh, and we can see that they are taking full advantage on wet team, uh, the wet team, by get, taking away the Vayne and the Tristana and the Diana, uh, a nice flex pick, uh, though it does look like Creon's going to be picking up the Kane. Kind of hopping through these champs picks very quickly. Uh, based on these two builds so far for these teams, I'm liking wet teams kind of defensive poke comp and there's some really scary damage on PTP, so it's kind of interesting seeing how these two shake up so far. Yeah, I think they're little i think it ptp's comp seems a little odd to me i always think it's puzzling to see vars especially right now i don't think vars is in the greatest position especially with how big tanks are it's good now now vanal could run on a hit vars but still like there's a sivir you saw the sivir already so you mm -hmm. know you're gonna get run down now you've got hecarim too i just i don't know i'm a little little sus on that ad carry the silas i think will help i mean those are some really good ultimates to seal on the side of wet team and you know, you got that extra carry in Aatrox, but. Mm. You know, funny enough, if uh, Utility Monster actually did bring up the Varus pick, uh, I'm soloing was also questioning it uh, whenever their team played uh, the other day. And so it was kind of like, it, it's one of those champs that uh, Utility Monster was saying that it was, uh, I believe a strong ADC, like it's not, you know, the worst possible position, uh, but there are other champions that would fit better. Based on the way these two sides have shaken up, I do think it's going to be really difficult for Varus to actually pick a target because he needs to be able to get his stacks off before actually hitting with that corrupting arrow. So the only real target that's not going to be like running at him into the face is going to be that Cho'Gath, and that's just going to be a lumbering giant that is going to be terrifying. So it's going to be interesting to see how this ends up unfolding. I'm kind of leading towards the wet team. Uh, it's just they've got a lot of hit it and go. Uh, buttons on their side that it's going to be kind of a little hard for ptp to deal with i think i would agree uh the only thing i don't like about like what team's comp i think as a whole is actually really good except for the uh the syndra i'm not a big fan of syndra um i always think that picking syndra is pretty troll of a pick oh yeah uh, and i don't think it's good like i think it's usually really bad um just because you're a stat stick you are probably one of the stat stickiest champions in league but it's you know it's more of there just to like as a hey we needed something to fill the mid mm -hmm. uh because the rest of our comp is just that dirty like you know like this is just such a good comp yeah like you're talking about the Cho'Gath kind of just lumbering forward Siviralt on Cho'Gath just gonna be zooming like there's gonna be no stopping this boy and I'm worried for PTP they don't really have a lot of tank busting power on their side like it's just the Varus Kane Aatrox they're not really gonna break through that line very easily and with the new Hecarim changes, which I also forgot to mention because we are on the new patch today. There are the new Hecarim changes. Mm, what were those again? Uh, remind me. Uh, they have moved some of the stats around. Uh, let me pull up the patch notes real quick just to get the exact details for you. Because there are there was a, there's a quite a few things. OK, so base armor down, HP growth down. Damage on his Q increased. Now uh, uses more bonus AD. There's more damage per stack from his Q. Um, his stacks fall off one at a time instead of all at once. Uh, and I think probably one of the biggest things is his W now gives him armor and magic resistance while it's activated. Mm, that is very important. Uh, so that's going to be something that we'll have to keep an eye on throughout the course of this. Uh, I do see that Tarek also had a little bit of an adjustment. Their base magic resist was reduced. 
uh, fairly drastically by four points. And then we're also seeing that the Dazzle's uh, cooldown was increased. So I kind of expect Zyra to have a little bit of an easier time dealing uh, with one sweep. That's going to be a lot of poke damage that uh, uh, Remdrill is going to be able to pull out. Uh, so we'll have to see exactly how that ends up playing. Yeah, basically about half the champions in this game were in the patch notes today um, in some shape or another, mostly in nerf. Silas got a nerf. Small Tarek got a nerf. Also mm. kind of small. Siver got a nerf. Uh, obviously, we were just talked about the changes to Hecarim. Oh, it's, I it's, like it's, this invade jumping right in here oh. on bacon pancakes, getting caught out just a little bit, not really paying attention, probably looking at the store means that they are going to be having to flash over the wall in order to get away. And we got Tadush looking for a re-engage, not able to find it. So they're going to be backing off. You know, today is close there. Almost had him. I think if he hit that center cue right on, maybe they could have finished him, but bacon gets out. No flash though on the Cho'Gath. That's it's going to be something I think Creon tries to take advantage of, though it depends on the cane he wants. Remember, cane, like, you know, it's it's dependent on which form he's going for, where we'll see him pressure. If he's looking for red cane, I expect him to just sit top lane and just constantly be ganking this Cho'Gath until six. Otherwise, though, I mean, if he's going blue, he's basically just going to be, I think, sitting on Zyre, on Syndra. I don't think Sivir Tarek is a great lane to gank. Per se, it's not like bad, but it's not the worst. I think Syndra is probably the best option, but ooh, ooh the Zyra nice catch. Engage here, right there. Zyra getting caught out fairly hard. Bamantide taking a lot of damage, but that's going to be first blood potentially going over to the side as Tarek goes down. Varus managing to pick up that kill. Uh, that is going to be a nice bit of gold in their pocket as we see the uh, Let's Do Vanal starting to pull ahead. Uh, that's what they're going to need to do for this Varus. Leaving them very low in lane, though, uh, so it's going to be kind of risky. Siver can get some nice uh, auto attacks off and be able to pick themselves up a re uh, revenge kill there. Yeah, so Tarek's, Tarek's a good champion, but I would say his level one isn't fantastic. Um, yeah, he's got the stun, but you really need that armor you know, to give that little bonus shield for engaging or the heal, especially, actually, I think the heal. Like, level two, you can all in, you... You E, you hit him, you yellow low, you Q, and you hit him again, you reset your Q, and you just keep doing that and just basically be this like, big front level two where everyone you know can't really break through you. I think they needed to wait just a couple more seconds for that fight, but good on PTP for following up, especially Vanal, knowing, hey, you know, I don't really need to focus Turtle of Doom. I just need to hit once a week. I just need to keep hitting this Tarek. He has no none of his resistances yet, that, um, mm -hmm. and his base stats aren't the greatest without that. So good on them good start to this game for them and you know this, I, i'm interested to see what build we see on this virus i do see lethal so i'm going to assume this is attack speed virus which does a little better into tanks but i want to see exactly what build path he runs down with this yeah and we were talking about which cane choice might be coming out with the amount of squishies on the side of uh, wet t the wet team, I kind of feel like Shadow Assassin would be something good to get ahead early, but most likely we're going to be seeing that Rost just because they need that inherent tankiness on their side uh, to kind of match the Cho'Gath and keep them pushed off. We've got a pause right here. Uh, what do you think so far? Like, uh, Let's see if we actually know what the reason for that is. Uh Looks like we have a bit of a internet connection issues for the wet team, so they're going to have to fix that and probably be hanging out here for a few minutes. In the meantime, if you'd like, you can actually hop over to the uh, fofesports.com. Take a look at the connect. We've got a new issue out there every week. Always a good read. And then uh, if you want to stop by the YouTube channel, uh, FOF Esports on YouTube, we've got our uh, lounge put up where we were actually talking about the last couple of games, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Got some good stuff over there. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I definitely recommend to check it out, especially the power rankings. You know, we got some, we've had some spicy takes already mm -hmm. in the first couple of weeks for the for these takes uh, around the Mythic League, uh, and you can also check out heroic leagues too. But you know, focused on this is kind of taking a look at this game, and the situation that you know the the, the teams find already find themselves in. Not a bad start. All across the board, everyone's kind of in a good position. Surprisingly, Charu is starting to get a decent lead onto Sandara. But you can see already just 
from where we are on the pause screen. Shara's are probably about to die. I mean, he's about to get ganked pretty hard by Creon. I yeah, uh, that's that's going to be a, a little bit of an unfortunate uh, thing about to happen right here. Uh, he, I have a feeling Sundara is going to be in a little bit of a tough spot. Uh, I don't know if we can see their cooldowns while we're on this pause. Uh, if, if we can, we can actually see what abilities they've got on cooldown. So it looks like they're just about to use their second charge in onto Charu. So most likely we're going to see that connect. Uh, get the stun off, get some nice knockup. Creon's going to get a couple of stacks. It could be a kill. Um, I have a feeling that because Flash is still up, we might see Charu able to get away uh, if they're very quick on the trigger. I think Charu doesn't even need to, to Flash right now. If he just takes literally one pixel step to the right, or mm -hmm. like, like upper right, the hook, the chains from Silas are going to go immediately into those minions, and he's not going to be able to get the stun off. So he's got to use the W to keep it up. I think it looks like Char is a, in the middle of casting a Q. It's kind of hard to tell uh, with the screen mm -hmm. colored. But if he casts the Q and E's immediately before Char can even get that W second W input, he could mm -hmm. probably kill him at least. And then he has a chance to maybe 1v1 Creon or he can walk out of it. I don't think Creon has anywhere near enough damage to really run down Syndra at this much health. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see when we come out of the re out of this pause. What no, they're exactly only level four. Happened. It's it's a question, I think, of if the slow from Creon is enough to keep Syndra in lane, whether or not they'll need to flash. Um, because if they're able to connect uh, with the W, then I think Kane might actually be able to do something. Well, I mean, if if, if but, he kills Sundar first, if he kills yeah. Sundara before Sundar can get any damage off, I think Char just walks away because Kane only has really right. you know two damage abilities, and yeah, you're giving him towards the blue stack, but. In this situation, I actually think that's fine. Like the Kane late game, I don't think is going to be an insane threat, especially because you know, like, look how much AD is on the side of P2B. You have Aatrox, exactly. you have Varus, you have Kane. Those tanks are just going to build full, the full armor, and Creon's not going to hurt them. Sure, you can get to Sivir or Charu, but like again, like we said in in the draft, Charu is really just there as an extra damage source. Not mm -hmm. really like you could have plugged anything in there almost, and it probably would have been fine. So I don't think it's that big of a deal if they, you know, they trade him for Creon in a fight or like Sandara. Mm -hmm. Turtle is going to be the concerned one, but I mean, you have the Tarek, you have the ultimate. I don't know. It just it doesn't feel like a comp that an assassin will find a lot of success on. I um, mean, mm -hmm. you have one target to kill. I'm sure you're killing that target, but if it costs you the life of your AD carry or yourself for this the Syndra, I'm not sure if it's worth it. I'm not sure if it's worth the trade. So. Agree. And, you know, we, we haven't even mentioned the fact that Chairman Meow is sitting up in that bush right above them. So, like, the Hecarim is ready to kind of counter this gank, which might be, like, they've still got Ghost up, so they can easily get to the fight, like, before uh, anything too significant happens. So we could be seeing a fairly hard engage from both of these teams. Uh, with the health bars, though, I have a feeling PTP would come out uh, the loser if that were to happen. In the meantime... Yeah. Uh, seen anything interesting in solo queue lately? Uh, yeah, my high kill, my high death count. <laughs> oh, really? Um, other than that, mm, I anything. just had a game where I went like fourteen, five, and twenty-one on Shen and lost. That was that was depressing. We had a, a master Yi and a gangplank and a couple of other hard pushers. I can't remember who was specifically on the opposing team, and hmm. so we lost one fight in the mid lane and lost. Both mid lane turrets, the inhibitor, and the nexus turrets. That push mm -hmm. is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> the, the master Yi um, push is disgusting. I'm trying to think of a big, like the biggest thing. I've seen, I saw something recently. I can't remember what it was. Ivern. I've see, started seeing a lot of Ivern in solo queue. Mm, yes. I, Ivern I, has I made a comeback. I thought, I always think that's weird. Um, I'm never usually expecting to see a lot of Ivern. Mm -hmm. uh, same with. A couple. Oh, what, there's a mid laner I saw, and I'm like, this is really bizarre to see this here twice in recent days. Um, was it Ezreal? No, I want to say it was Gangplank mid or Cho'Gath mid. I've seen a lot. Interesting. And not like, yeah, it's like, it's like I haven't seen a lot of in recent years, so excited to see that a little bit more. But I, I don't know. Right now, I feel like most people. Are just trying to pick around 80 carry and tank top so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting yeah. yeah 
it'll I'm be interesting to see if that affects gameplay. the FOF meta. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that affects the FOF meta. Which, uh, you know, speaking of it, we haven't really talked too much about the new Udyr. Because technically there was a game that it was played the other day uh, and shouldn't have been because it was on the ban list because of uh, the, the the rework and whatnot. I yeah. have been seeing a lot of Udyr top which for me personally, I have not had someone really tell me why it works. Um, but I just feel like his early levels, he needs the jungle clearing to kind of like get himself ahead. I just feel like it's so much better for him to have safe clears early on rather than having to deal with a lane opponent. A lot of it is the ultimate and the W. So the W, even with very few levels on it, you get a really ridiculous amount of healing coming out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ultimate change, you know, the making it so that creates the, you know, the little Anivia ult that follows people around kind of like it's basically like a Victor's ult, but with a built in slow. And it's really hard to get out for your opponents to get out of it once they're in. So mm -hmm. it's just really good like to trade like, oh, you hit them once and then you immediately cast again, run away because the ice is just going to run them down and it's <laughs> too hard to escape out of it. So it just trades really safely for that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Tiger form, I think, could use a little. Well, yeah, it's not Tiger anymore. It's it's bear. Volier. Yeah, it's bear form now. Yeah, sorry, it's bear. Mm -hmm. So bear, it's like, God, it's going to be so weird to call, start calling that bear in the E boar. So bear form <laughs> has, I think, needs a little bit of a buff. I feel like the electricity is just too weak right now. Um, it does like, really well on a solo target. Like if you can manage to proc it on a single target and there's nothing for it to bounce to, I feel like it's decent. But whenever it is bouncing between all those minions, then yeah, it feels like it's not doing anything. Yeah, I think it just needs a little bit more. It needs that better target selection. Like how they changed Misfortune's uh, Q, was it back in season seven? When they made it so that the Q was more selective of champions mm -hmm. um, on the second bounce. Something like that, I think, could probably be more useful or even make it so that it randomizes who it, I mean, it's already kind of random bouncing, but like make it so mm -hmm. that it's likely to bounce more likely to back bounce bounce back to a champion after hitting a minion or something that might help. But yeah, no, I think he is strong. He's definitely strong right now. I'm kind of bummed we're not going to see him at Worlds. Uh, and mm -hmm. while we did see that accidental game in FOF the other day, he is enabled in Heroic now um, and he'll be enabled in Mythic for next week. So. Right. I'm excited and, to see teams play that. Yeah, and I, it's like I know you're calling them bear and tiger form or whatever, because like that's kind of what the colloquial term was, because everyone just refused to like call them by their actual names. I have to admit, I like the ability names. You've got Iron Mantle for the W, uh, so like that just sounds cool to me. Uh, and Wingborn Storm, like there's like for that for that ultimate. I just I love yeah. that phrase. <laughs> Ram, that's the name of the speed boost. It's Ram. Ram. Yeah. Boar is the heal. Yeah, which makes because you know what. Three of those abilities we've seen as champions. One of them we haven't yet. Some were saying it's Bristle. I think that's dumb. Um, Bristle doesn't have a heal. I would hope it's Bristle not Bristle. does not have a heal, like, at all. That's the thing. Sejuani is not riding an Elder God. Yeah. <laughs> so Now, I, I do think, though, you know, the fact that the boar gives a heal, I think someone on the Riot team has been playing a lot of Minecraft, you know, all mm -hmm. eating all those pork chops. Quite use potentially. The use the pig for the heal. You got the seal sister on the passive. And it looks like once week has reconnected, so we've got Tarek back into the game. Um, that was, yeah, that was a uh, a massive um, uh, timer, I think, because I believe that there's only a 15 minute block worth of pauses. So should we lose internet connection again? I think it'll be uh, interesting to see exactly what ends up happening. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like we'll be hopping back in here shortly. There we go. Timer has restarted. We are once again three minutes into this oh. game. Four minutes, and we're about to see something crazy. Looks like the recall has stopped uh, for the Hecarim, and they are about to hard engage on this mid lane. Yeah, we're going to actually watch a replay of the first blood. So, oh, oh nope. Here we go. It's just we wound it back a couple seconds. There All we go. Right. We got our own chrono boost. Okay. I think. And there we go. There we go. Charu getting jumped on by Creon. Creon's going to get the blade splash off on there. Nice bit of damage. We have the Hecarim looking for the dive potentially. Choosing not to continue it at the last second means they only take a single tower shot and both members of PTP are able to escape. 
I think that went very well for PCP. They got lucky uh, by seeing the disengage because Hecarim could easily have continued that and probably gotten the kill. Yeah, a little... little Would have been spicy. Uh, yeah, it, it was. Well, it was we got a room right here. Too. Poor uh, Tarek is getting caught very, very close to down. They've only got like a pixel's worth of health left, but unfortunately, Varus not able to follow up. I am kind of confused why Virus didn't just try to kill the Tarek. Like, he's that low. You're not going to kill the, the Sivir with that that arrow but he gives it a try in the mid lane too the fight you know going well Sharu forced to have unfortunately eventually burn the flash but did manage to survive no one gets dies everyone just kind of walks away uh Creon almost if he had been able to walk in there I think he would have but this top lane duel is starting to get a little little hot I mm, that's I think it's a little cold is a better way to describe because I just realized that bacon pancakes took glacial on uh Cho'Gath which is the most frustrating thing in existence to deal with. I cannot stand having to deal with the Cho'Gath knocking you up and then being slowed for like 20 seconds. It's it's so hard. Like you're not able to re-engage if you're not close enough. Uh, so it's just an absolutely perfect tool for them. And I feel like with Wet's comp, that is absolutely what they need. The slows are gonna go perfect either for a disengage or a hard engage. Yeah, and Glacial is really good for, you know, especially on heavy engaged champions on the Cho'Gath, I agree. It's very frustrating. Oh, it's just, it's like, you can't run him down really just because of the slows, the damage. If he stands on it, you're getting, you're having it reduced it against his allies. So really good to stop the engage from Aatrox coming later. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you know, I want to look at PTP's bottom side. Something, you know, we didn't think about, actually, you want, we might have to wait off that because Chairman Meow is coming to this top. Oh. He's looking for the engage. Um, uh, we soon do see, see uh, <laughs> Today, she is looking uh, for, like, I feel like he's kind of a suspect of this engage. He does have a, a well-placed ward, so he'll see the Hecarim should they come through the river. Um, in the meantime, we've got a nice bit of poking going on here in the bot lane. Once we get caught by the snare and then hit by the corrupting arrow does mean that there's a lot of damage coming out. Looks like Chairman Meow's probably backed off at this point, gone down to their blue buff, uh, so they weren't able to find anything up in the top lane. Probably for the best. Meow hasn't gotten, I mean, uh, Bacon has, oh, once week. <laughs> once week, uh, does manage to pick up that kill. Very nicely done. Uh, and in the meantime, Hecarim hovering around that bot lane. Looks like we're going to be seeing this first Drake fall here very soon. And Banal finally realizes, hey, you know, I could probably kill this low health Tarek this time with the Q. Takes the shot. Once week going down again. 2-0 on this bottom lane. And you know, I want to point out, Something I wasn't thinking about. I guess the, the one advantage for Varus right now in this matchup is that he has a much better lane position, like just just a better lane matchup with the Zyra. It's a lot of ranged poke. Tark doesn't do super great into that. Mm -hmm. And it's it's paying off so far. You're only 2-0 on the Varus. And while, despite my my hesitancy around the champion, I think, you know, if, if it gets a big lead, it's that that the issues of like, you know, he's not gonna have DPS for late game tanks. He's not gonna be able to, he's got to get really close. It's gonna be a lot nullified by the fact he's gonna be so far ahead in items. Mm -hmm. no bacon. There we go today. Who's jumping right on top of this bacon pancakes. He's looking, he's trying to make himself some breakfast right there. Isn't able to finish him off, but that is going to be a back for the Cho'Gath. We do see the teleport is available, so he'll be coming back to lane fairly quickly. Uh, but that is a good position uh, as they have now increased their gold lead to like 20 CS on top of Cho'Gath. So they're going to be able to get a nice back, get some nice gold from their pocket spent. And then that is going to be a Rift Herald spawning here momentarily. Lots of objectives on the map. Not a lot of act proactivity coming from either side just yet. We do see priority starting to shift in the direction of PTP as they start to take control of this uh, momentum. And Cho'Gath used teleport to get back to land, so he will not be able to join if they decide to fight for this dragon. Neither can Tadeus, though, so that's at least good. Mm -hmm. for the side Look of wet this poke Ooh. damage we see Sivir having to pop the spell shield getting some health back instead of mana that's a nice bit of change so he is able to stay in this lane and poor once week is caught slightly out of position as we mentioned uh Tarek doesn't really have a hard engage uh or disengage so he's not able to like get in and out of the lane very quickly so that does lead to the advantage that Varus has in this able to get some very free poke should Zyra manage to connect with anyone? For example, right there, got a nice lockdown. Varus looking to step up. The arrow is going shot and just a little wide. Very close. And once again, the arrows, they're flying in the bottom lane. Varus 
It's actually down in CS though, so there has been a little bit of loss. No, once we once again caught out. Hecarim though has decided to come in and join this fight, jumping in on the back of the flash comes out, means that they do not get knocked under tower. So let's do Vayner looking to get some engaged. Terra gets the double stun off, and that is gonna be Hecarim cleaving the Varus down in two, and the Zyra is gonna be chopped down as well. Yeah, good bait coming out of wet team using the low health there to give an opportunity for Ekram to come in. And look at that. He gets the t ult off, pushes them into the corner, and the Tarek looks like he's going to go down, but he gets the double auto off for the quick heal just to save his life. And two kills on a Hecarim. Oh, I hate to see that kind of thing start to get a le little lead like that, start snowballing. It's going to hurt if he can. <laughs> Nope, that speedy horseman's gonna start becoming a absolute terror. Kane is got some uh, the ability to step through the walls uh, with their shadow step is gonna allow them to traverse the map almost as quickly. But I feel like Hecarim is just known like he is the need for speed. Like that is that is what his objective is. He is Sonic, if not Rumble. Like Rumble is not Sonic. Hecarim yeah. is the Sonic. Yeah, and he's you know he used to build tank and he was already scary then now with the changes to his kit it's actually be it's better to start building more of the bruiser kind of build a little bit more ad so those kills can actually lead to a lot of hurt especially for this bottom side for ptp their only escape tools they tried one ultimate weren't able to it just wasn't enough they have both of them if they want even a chance to get out of here but Sundara Ooh, stun's gonna come out in this mid lane, and that means that poor, uh, uh, poor mid laner is gonna be caught out as Sundara is gonna get taken down. The Syndra picking up the kill, removing Silas, but that is gonna be blue team taking down the Drake in revenge. They picked up that Wind Drake, which is actually what Hecarim wanted. Uh, so they, he's not gonna get that extra speed boost, that extra free damage. Uh, so that is a good objective to take away from the wet team. PTP is starting to lose a little bit of momentum, but I feel like that as the scaling starts to progress, they're going to be the one in advantage. Yeah, and I think that this is just, you know, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Say that one more time. I, I was saying that uh, as they, they scale into this game, that PTP is going to be the one with the advantage. Oh, uh, like, okay. Like I thought you said, and I, and I had one of those moments where like the thought just floated off, but we'll have to hold off on that. Yep. Chairman Mao's going top is going top we got a nice pushback into this tower however the ultimate's going to come out from aatrox they're trying to run away we do see able to get some decent damage kane has come to join the fight as well reaping slash comes out dealing a decent amount of damage but it's not going to be enough the, the aatrox is able to finish it off bacon pancakes takes down Tadeusz, and that is going to be a good kill for the chogoth they're able to get some nice noms right there got themselves a little bit bigger get a good stack but silas is like hey you took their stats i want them too and he manages to pick up the kill nice revenge for him yeah, two for one in favor of PTP. I thought they got the double there, but Meow unfortunately goes down. Charu, ooh, hang on. Good okay, they're, shield. Yeah, they're fine down there. But Charu, you know, unfortunately not able to get there soon enough to save Meow. And it, it cost them two. You got a kill on the mid, you got a kill on the top. And kind of spread them out a little bit, which is kind of where PTP wants. They want their kills spread out a bit more so that they have a couple more threats. That's the nice thing, at least, is they have several damage threats to, you know, attack wet with. But again, they gotta get to those tanks first. They're doing it right now, but now the choke gets kind of back. Now Hecarim got to back and from all those kills got bottom, he finally finishes that Divine Sunderer. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're very, they're gonna be a lot tougher to deal with now, but they are Drinker on the Atrix. Look at the the leads though that have started to, to showcase on the side of uh, PTP versus Wet. So as ooh nice ulti coming out from Tarek. It's not going to be enough though as they unfortunately poor Turtle of Doom is going to be taken out before it has a chance to drop. Very well done, good knock up by Zyra uh, in order to get that damage off. In the meantime, in this top lane, the Gore Drinker Aatrox is doing so much damage to this Varus, just chunking away at that health bar. There's nowhere for him to go. Given the kill over, never mind the blade slash takes out the Cho'Gath, and that is another behemoth down. Aatrox gonna get some free turret plates for that. In the meantime, in this mid lane, we see Charu coming in to try and get some more turret plates off of this mid tower. Not gonna be able to do it as Zyra has come up to assist. Yeah, PTP, good plays yet again. Wet kind of slow on the reaction on the, with that Tarek ultimate bottom, so I think it need to go out the moment the Zyra ult drops instead of after the knockup comes through, but it is what it is. PTP picking up two. That gank top side, very nice. Good to see Crayon come through. The flash out of the Aatrox, though, to get that 
third hit onto the Chao Geth and knock him up and hold him in place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Mac. And Ooh, we do see it is done. the Ross. Glacial out. coming out onto Varus. Let's do Vanal caught out of position in a drastic way. They were picking up that kill really easily. In the meantime, in the mid lane, we have Silas trying to take down Syndra. Not able to do it. Gets completely blasted by those magical balls. And then we have Ross going in, looking for the hard engage. Goes through the Umble Trespass. Gets brought exceptionally low. Trying to find the Shadow Step. Is hit with damage, though. But they're barely able to get out in time. That cooldown. But they're walking right into a Jogath who's just going to silence them and chop their face right off. More stats going into the uh, pocket of this Jogath for absolutely for free. And in the meantime, we have Zyra trying to get away. Not able to escape. Having to flash in order to avoid getting caught. But still hit by that knockup. But hitting the Blast Cone to get away at the very last possible second. Meantime, that is going to be a free Rift Herald for the Wet team as they got a good position out of those kills. There's fights all over the map. Ooh, hang on. It could be continuing. I don't no, know if that's done. something they're that uh, PTV wants. I think wants. they're done. I think they're done there. But good fight after fight around the map. First going to Wet, I mean PTP, then Wet, and just kind of bouncing back and forth and back and forth between the two teams as they find kills all over the place. It's getting it turning into a very bloody you know matchup right now it's about a kill a minute a little bit less now that we've taken over the 15 minute mark but today is looking for pancakes again nope never mind yeah, i don't think they're no nah, he, he's looking for the engage but not quite able to find it um i have a feel like he's able to get these nice knockups get some good damage hitting those uh uh vital procs uh, essentially the the sensitivity points but we see some damage coming down here as charu manages to take out bamatide creon taking charu in revenge the next Drake should be coming up here in just a couple of seconds. And once it does, we're going to be seeing that Hextech Drake fall to PTP, taking this very, very quickly. So while first Rift Herald did go over uh, to the side of Team Wet, we do see that the PTP, once again, still having great objective control in general, jumping right on top of this uh, poor Sivir who just has to flash out in order to avoid getting caught by that chain of corruption. Taking a lot of damage from those piercing arrows, though. Yeah, and I actually think... This is a soul that, you know, for stacking, I think is fine for wet on. Like these are like Hextech Dragon and Cloud aren't great as individuals. Most dragons really aren't great as singles, but they, I think, are like they're OK for this team. I think, though, the Mountain Drake, four mountains plus that shield, all those like so that's what's that? That's 24 percent bonus armor and MR if they get all four of them. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. Oh, look at this. We've got the Umbral Trespass chasing the Aatrox, able to take or taking out the Hecarim as they jump over the wall. Uh, and that is going to be a nice pickup kill as they got a little bit greedy for that uh, red buff. Yeah, that's they're just kind of wandering into it. That was a, kind of a wandered, kind of a random death. It felt like it just kind of sat there. It mm -hmm. feels like that's kind of been the, the name of this game so far. I've, you know, something I've noticed a little bit of watching this. A lot of the, you know, it feels like everyone is a little slow to react to things happening. They get hit by a stun, then they sit there, and then they go, oh, I'm getting hit. Now I need to walk away. I've seen this a couple times now, and I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if, you know, it's the, that, that hot California weather or if it's just they're, they're sad about the passing of the queen, but they're, they're look, looking, looking a little off today from what I'm used to from both these teams, actually. A, a little bit. Um, I'm not entirely sure it could be uh, any number of reasons. In the meantime, though, it seems like PTP is taking advantage where they can, able to find these really nice kills for themselves. Um, and right now we do see that the Ross is currently got a nice bounty on their heads, a 300 gold bounty. Uh, they've just been able to do a lot of work on this map and haven't been punished too heavily. Uh, in the meantime, in this top lane, once again, Creon looking for this hard engage. This is the thing about Rost. Even though he's not as fast as Shadow Assassin came, he's still able to basically be anywhere he wants at any time. And you've got to be ready for it. Yeah, and once again, Cho'Gath getting out, managing to just walk away this time, not having to worry about getting pulled back in or knocked up he's getting to that point where he's just so tanky he's gonna be a pretty problem now to get keep ganking i think it's starting to be time to start focusing on charu maybe find turtle of doom see if you can catch him out or once week just I mean, probably once week he's probably the easier target to just quickly catch the turret gonna go down on this bottom side with, from the herald yes yeah there it is turret down yeah, uh, like with that, 
that red trial drop does open up a lot of the map for uh, the wet team as they start to take some of these objectives off the map. I do like a lot of the proactiveness coming out of PTP though. They're looking for these hard engages right there. You see, uh, t we got Kane just taking what camps he can from the enemy jungler, making sure that they're trying to starve them out as much as possible. Uh, we are starting to see a huge push now for this bot lane. Could be trying to collapse on this Syndra, uh, though we've got a huge fight brewing in the mid lane as well. I think the next fight could kind of blow this game wide open, depending on just how close it is. I think it's going to be around this dragon. I think it, it's going to be to over the fight for that. You know, wet team wants to start stacking them. PTP really just wants to get to the soul. It's not like the most amazing soul, but it's something that can maybe keep them alive longer in a fight. And it just keeps it out of the hand of wet team, which is always just a good bonus as in and of itself. So I have that minute 15 left. I think there's that the, we're going to see a pretty big fight break out for that. Yeah, most. Yeah, we're going to be seeing. We've already got uh, PTP has some great vision control of that bot side jungle. So they've already got a good objective control right there. Uh, it's going to be really dangerous for the wet team to try and find their find positioning uh, just because of the fact that they have to worry about the Aatrox TPing in. If they can stall long enough, Cho'Gath will have their TP as well. Uh, but we've got plenty of CC disruption on both of those top laners to where even if a TP starts channeling, might not be pulled, able to get to the fight in time. Yeah, they may have to. They, th this is going to be a lot ahead of this fight. Who wins it? It's going to come down to It's going to come down to who can stop the other from going in. Though at this point, they're both so low that neither of them might be able to enter the fight. I think they're going to both try to back up here, try to heal up and get prepared to teleport in. Cho'Gath staying longer. So he's going to be probably the later to this fight. His teleport is almost to back up. I think it will be up in time for this. Just Dragon maybe. is now spawning. He's got probably another 15 to 20 seconds. So if a PTP is fast enough, they'll be able to burn it down before it's actually able to come online. There's no ward down there, though, for uh, the wet team to TP to. So they'll have to actually get something down. Uh, oh, they got one in the pit. Oh, they, they've got a couple in the pit. Sorry, I was confusing my red and blues. <laughs> uh, it doesn't fair, really fair. matter though Cho'Gath is able to walk down in time uh, so they will be able to join this fight Kane though and Hecarim both have the engages over these walls so well, as long as they've got vision they can engage it's gonna be we're already seeing some posturing right here PTP has taken control of the river we got Wet hiding out in this uh, choke point I think that that's actually Wet needs to be a little proactive here Oh, we yeah, got the Terek ulti got... dropping. Here it goes. We got a fight brewing right now. Terek does go onto the Hecarim. Uh, they do manage to go in hard. However, now that that's already done, they're able to force the fight away. The dragon, it goes, has not gone down yet. It's getting a lot of the members of PTP low. There we go. We got a nice hard engage. Wet able to finish him off. Pancakes getting that kill. Today, who's trying to find a target, hitting as many people as they can. They ulted as Aatrox, doing as much, but unfortunately, their health bar does not regen enough, and that is going to be a one team fight for the wet team, but we have the Kane getting the shut down on that Aatrox, and that is gonna be a huge ace for the Hecarim. Yeah, big fight for wet team. They really need to step up here and really make something happen, and they do it spectacularly. Right there, you see, they go in, they split this fight up. Varus just completely zoned out. Isn't gonna get to anything besides throw that Q, and they come back in, they're looking for the for the sliver, but she flashes out. He's not able to really chase it down. And Turtle of Doom just sits here on the backside. Varus now trying to enter the fight. They ain't all trying to do something, but you know, with nothing else left but Creon, they can all just turn and take him out. Turtle of Doom does get taken. Creon does manage to at least get them something out of the fight, but that is a big blow to the side of PTP. Wet finally getting the team fight, finally getting to utilize the advantages of having that big beefy front line, which, you know, I saw a lot of abilities in that fight just miss the Sivir because they hit Hecarim or they hit Cho'Gath because they're just so big of targets that mm -hmm. PTP they're can't, yeah. Yeah, they're able to body block that dragon because we do see the smite is up for Creon. They were able to ult while during the old Umbral Esh uh, trespass, just couldn't quite find it. Yeah, it was an unfortunate it's fight for. Oh. Huh? Oh, it looks like we got a bit oh. of an. A little oh, bit I of a fight I... there. Not mu not much going on there though. <laughs> I think it. Uh. I think I think I think it looked like. Oh well, they did get a shutdown. 
They did get the Cho'Gath. They did get the Cho'Gath. There we go. <laughs> and that could translate into Baron. Um, I think that's an easy Baron take. Uh, we don't see a lot of members of the wet team actually like they don't have vision of this fight right now so this is actually kind of uh, scary for them they are do see that they're on the baron they know that they're fighting but today is coming around this back line able to force them off the smite is available so that's gonna be a baron nasher going down nice lockdown on the syndra able to keep them from getting a uh, hard engage and now we've got the rest of ptp just kind of backing off good objective trading they knew that the smite would be down for the uh the hecarim or at least they would be in a better position to fight for it and they were able to actually force that up for them Force yeah, that it was that was a good fight. They knew that the 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 rest of Wet Team wouldn't be able to really do anything with Bacon out of the fight. So they, you know, Wet they don't really have that big of a gold lead right now. So they're just content. Let them take it. It's okay. It's just Baron first Baron. They still have all their they still have well all but one of their outer turrets. It's not a big deal. They're not going to make a massive push with it probably, especially this early in the game. It, that is a pretty. Pretty early Baron, I would say. So I think they're content with just letting them have it and just kind of slowing the pace of the game down. I think that actually works even better in their favor because the slow slowing it down lets them have more time to scale, get tankier, get more damage on this Sivir, make the stat stick of Syndra more stat sticky. And I don't know, I think, I think, I mean, it's good that they took Baron. It is letting them to get a little bit of push, but I'm a little worried. I, I know that I was saying PTP had the better scaling earlier, but I think that I might have been wrong in that assessment because I just wasn't really thinking about the Cho'Gath stacking and the uh, the Syndra stat sticking. So that could very well become a problem. This Baron push should be useful, like we said. you said, though. Um, allow them to get some free damage on these turrets and allow to get some better push. Ooh, yeah, nice like little <laughs> back and forth here in the top lane as we see the two health bars just kind of hitting each other over the head. Bacon Pancakes getting brought a little bit low, getting hit in those sweet spots. Looks like gotten yes. slightly knocked up. We got Bamatide coming in on the back line. The root goes wide, though, but there's a lot of damage coming out from that magic ripping right through the health bar on the Cho'Gath. Does mean they get taken out. That's going to be a free top turret now as we've got four members pushing up, and that could be Tier 2. Chairman Meow on the Krugs is in a little bit of danger if they don't get out of there. They could be caught out. We can already see Ross trying to for zone them off, does manage to actually do it. So that's going to be a tier two turret falling as well. Uh, and that could be a potential push uh, throughout the course of the, the rest of this map, making great use of this Baron power play. PTP is actually getting a lot of object objectives across this map. They've increased the gold lead now. They've managed to actually kind of take a little bit of a lead now. It's only 1K, but that's going to be uh, enough to kind of start making a difference. I said I didn't think PTP would get a lot out of that. I rescind that statement. Like they managed to get three turrets that from that. I you know the mid turret going down, not unexpected. They were they, yeah they were they were, we were expecting that. They were they were pushing pretty hard. But the Cho'Gath going down top, and then no one comes up to really defend the turrets. And PTP just takes the first outer, and then just like oh we're not being challenged because we're gonna take this inner turret too. And just mm -hmm. marched on through. I'm not sure what. The idea was there from what maybe they just felt they just rather farm and just let the turrets go and that they didn't they weren't strong enough to challenge around them with the Baron buff. But I, I feel they could have. I feel they, that they with, with only three there, they absolutely could have. They might have been able to. Uh, I do like this, though. There's a lot of pressure now on the top side of this map, which means that the dragon fight we got forming up right here, that is going to be a huge caught out. Uh, for the side of PTP as one of their members gets taken down and we have the Taric ulti dropping in order to keep a couple members alive. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough as the Cho'Gath gets ripped to shreds by the uh, Ross as they jump in on that backline. Hecarim trying to get away gets Umbral trespassed by the uh, Ross, the far Ross and he manages to do a lot of damage there. Ignite getting dropped down does mean that the Hecarim has to run away, is going to be able to heal up and stay alive. Tadeusz is caught out in this backside. They do get ex uh, manage to get an explosion off Varus, taking that kill, uh, managing to rip the Hecarim to shreds. In the meantime, uh, the rest, that's going to mean that this Drake is now free for uh, PTP to take. Uh, they're a little low on health bars, but there's not a lot that the Wet Team can do to contest. Now, Wet Team just kind of gives up on that fight. It looked like they wanted to take it at the beginning, but once Cho'Gath goes down, it's just, it's just they scatter like crazy. They come back around and try to take Creon in there, but once Chairman Meow, with Chairman Meow that low, it's it's just a one-way trip to death. He goes down, and then everyone just gets chased down there on the side of wet. They managed to get out 
of the fight. I think they could have fought a little bit. Ooh, Bacon. Ooh's uh, getting caught out there. Bamatide Bacon looking to make some breakfast of his own. Is going to get knocked out by the Zyra ulti as Bamatide manages to flash out and escape. The Ignite was dropped, uh, so that does or mean that he's going to not able to heal up quite as much. Bamatide trying to just kind of be like, hey, stay away. Leave me alone. I don't want any of this. I'm just trying to walk away. Dragon's like, I'm hungry. Get over here. I need some vegetarian food in my diet. Roll Tide rolls some vines at their opponent to lock him down and runs away. <laughs> Bamatide managing to escape that. Didn't had to burn the flash, had to burn ignite and an ultimate to get out of there. But I would take that trade if I was wet. So that mm -hmm. is a good one. But at least, you know, they're not getting any gold over to this to to bacon right now. Um, what can point out Siver getting some life steal you know some life steal cutting some heal cutting just in general we go. got the ex executioners finally need that uh yeah. for the varus and for the xylus both of them are able to do a lot actually just all four members on the side of ptp do some form of healing we do see uh like that each one needs to just get the, the those grievous wounds procked on them yeah it's gonna take a couple of I mean, she's gonna have the bounce she has the bouncing blades coming mm -hmm. out so that is a potential way to get it on to everyone on the enemies on the side of PTP like that, just like immediately. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could hear the snap, but there was a snap. Uh, <laughs> I and, heard it. Oh, good, good. Good, oh, good, oh, good. Oh, good. There we go. We got the Kingmaker jumping in right on top of this Syndra. Syndra trying to walk away. Doesn't manage to drop, drop the ball. There hits the stun. The ultimate gets thrown, but unfortunately, Silas goes golden, manages to stay alive, and that is going to be a disengage right there. However, Ekrim look and be like hey you wanted this fight you're gonna get this fight as they're chasing him down jumping right on top of silas the lots of damage getting shredded the uh axes flying around two tps coming down as the top laners are coming to join this as well and look at this the aatrox getting chased away as he would have been a 1v3 and that is going to be very good for the wet team but unfortunately they've got the rest of the members of ptp coming to join ross looking for that knockup does manage to find it hitting the chogath into the air aatrox trying to hit those sweet spots fighting off the uh giant behemoth of a dinosaur does manage to hit that but we do see that there's now three members of ptp hiding out in this jungle looking for a side angle not able to find it the dragon is still got a couple of minutes before it's going to be on the field uh but that will be sold for ptp if they manage to get it Oop. I needed myself there, but yeah, good on wet getting out of there. They got the kill. They got the teleport. They managed to get out without losing anyone else for the squad. And yeah, that's that's good. You know, that's 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 a good position to be in. Dragon up in a minute and a half. They need to continue fighting for these. They, you know, PTP is on soul point now. If they manage to get this soul, you know, it's going to be make that 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 much harder and that much longer what has to wait before they can really get to that point where they're just unkillable with their tankiness so they're gonna have to look for this here i think they're in a good position they do have you know they, like they, they're they're kind of positioning well with their vision they have the vision around their jungle at least they know they're not going to get surprised well except bacon he's gonna get surprised on this top side bacon is just kind of overstepping their bounds thinking they're too tanky to be dealt with and unfortunately for them that is not the case look at that health bar just getting completely knocked around shredded to pieces Tarek ulti's gonna get dropped though and that's gonna be a double stun as they manage to get creon and uh Tadeusz, and that's gonna be today getting a sweet spot huge knockup and that is gonna be a kill as they take down bacon pancakes the raid boss was killed but so was the atrox so that's both raid bosses down syndra picking up another kill as the double goes over to the Hecarim, and look at this, we're gonna see them now, Chairman Meow chasing down Bamatide, jumming right on top of them, Banal trying to do what they can, Corrupting Arrow goes wide, and that is gonna be absolutely devastating, but unfortunately it's gonna be the Ace coming out, but that is gonna be a 400 gold kill for the Varus. Yeah, Varus managing to pick up one back there on the end, but you know, right here you were saying Bacon not really tanky enough to take it all. He looks pretty tanky to me. They are struggling so hard to kill him. And then when everything looks like they've got him, the Tarek ult saves him from so much damage, saves him from the stun, gives him time to come out of the knock, it gives Hecarim time to position, and once Hecarim's in there, just spinning those, uh, the, that axe over his head, just killing everyone, separating the team into the fight, forcing Aatrox and um, Ross to just be all the way over there. Once that's happened, it's just all over. They go down, let's do Vayner, not even there to get any damage, and he gets that kill there at the end, but 
it's only going to slow down Baron and just have Baron on one less person, but it doesn't matter because you're still just getting kills onto the Hecarim, and this Hecarim is getting very, very much... You know, he's, he's becoming very difficult to deal with. But. A very big boy. The uh, Death Dance doing a lot in order to keep them alive. That quasi tankiness that's available to him. Uh, un it's unfortunate Varus wasn't able to get off the uh, chain of corruption during that choke point of the fight and had to use it towards the end. Uh, with that, though, this Baron power play is going to be absolutely huge for the wet team. Uh, they're going to be able to start moving across this map with basic impunity and this dr next drake is going to be where we see this next fight uh we can already see ptp rushing there as quickly as they can to try and set up vision try and get everything squared away so that they're ready for the fight because they're gonna have to deal with a barren empowered wet team that it's just gonna be really really tough to have to deal with those extra stats it's noticed you know something about ptp's uh builds you don't say anything about about their builds. I, I see. I see. Gore drinkers galore. The basically the uh, Aatrox and the uh, the Ross are basically exactly the same. Yeah, they're building exact. Oh, hang on. We'll have to talk oh, about this we after. got the fight going on here in the middle uh, of this dragon pit. Nice bit of damage. Huge knock up coming out today. She's going to be ripped to shreds. Knocked up in the air before he killed before he could do anything at all. And in the back lane, we've got Hecarim trying to do what they can, but unfortunately not quite able to get themselves out of safety. And that is going to be huge as BTP manages to actually win that fight. Very well done on their side. Yeah, and Wet, you know, they Wet wasn't looking for this right here, but Sundaro with the Hecarim ultimate gets the chain right into the back, gets on to the Syndra, takes him down immediately. And once Syndra is down, like Turtle of Doom, he's just not even really getting any hits here on the back lane, just kind of playing so far back. It's already turned into a uh, route, it's down to a 3v5, and it's just a cleanup for PTP. Turtle of Doom, the only one left after it's all said and done. Which and, is so unfortunate in a number yeah. of ways because that's coming off of the Baron power play. And unfortunately, the wet team loses all but one. So only uh, Sivir, Turtle of Doom, is the only one left with the Baron. Uh, so they're basically, it's just extra gold in their pocket, but they have to now deal with a mountain sold PTP. Their team was already scary enough, but now they have an extra shield on top of everything. That's going to be really hard to deal with. Yeah, I still I still think wet team scales in this. I, I don't just, know if there's time to scale. Look yeah, how fast that mid lane's falling. Yeah, that, that, with how with how with now having sold that timer got pushed back even further for wet team uh, when they're going to hit that point. And I just don't think they're going to have that time anymore. Like you said, this team is just getting got just got blasted in that fight, a fight that honestly, like, wasn't that bad of a start. It wasn't like Sivir got picked out immediately. It was on the Syndra. It still took a couple seconds for her to go down and they had time to respond. But it just it was just a complete route for PTP. And at this point, I don't know, like what team they're going to need to really dig deep and really find a pick here. They, I, I think they need to get a pick onto the virus. They need to find him out on his own farming somewhere. I've seen him kind of be by himself a couple times you see him here kind of by the mid lane they need to get him they need to get that gold they need to get that bounty shut down on him and they need to find a way to kind of claw this game back because right now it is not looking pretty for them it is not looking pretty for wet at all uh we've got basically the top laners back in their uh f top lane fighting so Isla's pushing in that uh bottom side though is putting a huge amount of pressure on this map as we see it starting to pinch the Hecarim and the Syndra are having to respond, but it's going to be kind of interesting if they're actually able to stop them because I, we can already see a fight most likely brewing out here. We already got Tarek getting knocked up in this river, kind of setting up a, a signal flare for the rest of PTP to be like, hey, let's keep pressuring this area of the map. We're going to keep pushing this top side because that's going to allow Silas to do what they want. And if the rest of Wet responds, then that's basically going to be a free push for the Aatrox. Yeah, he's just going to be able to get a nice free push up there. Might even be able to take that inhibitor if they're unable to get back up in time. Smart map play coming out of PTP. We always like to see it, especially here in Heroic. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what the next 
Pile B. I feel like it's going to end up being... We got, like, another, like, essentially combined five minutes. Uh, it's two, yeah. mi two minutes for Baron to come back onto the field. Uh, then we got another three minutes. Once Elder hits... Elder's kind of going to be one of those. It's again, it's going to be a decisive objective for these teams. If Wed is able to pick it up, it's going to allow them to actually finish off PTP. Uh, but at the same time, if PTP decides, hey, we're just going to coin flip it. If you guys, one of the teams is going to start Baron, the other is going to kind of set up to ambush them. It's going to be really devastating depending on how it all plays out. Oh, I absolutely agree. I think this next fight... Like the game, the game will be decided at this next fight. And right now, you know, the pendulum's kind of, is favoring PTP pretty hard. But if what team can find that fight, they can pick out the cane, or they can take out the Varus before the fight game begins. Make this a five v four. I think they have a chance. Mm -hmm. Another thing to keep in mind is like we've got a lot of vision being placed down uh, in these enemy jungle, like around the Baron Pit, around the red buff, uh, topside red buff. Uh, if we look at the the um, the TPs that are available, those provide some really interesting flank points uh, for each of these teams. So basically, once the fights start, you can kind of start pincering the other opponent uh, as to eat, to force an objective, to force a team fight to open into a certain choke point. So I kind of expect those TPs from the uh, four members on both these teams to be really, really important once the fight finally kicks off. Oh, absolutely. I agree. They're, it's going to be a game of pushing for both solo lanes on both mm -hmm. teams, just trying to match each other. Ooh, oh, Syndra, Charu taking decent chunk damage, but getting some good chunk in return onto Sindara. Yeah, so it's going to be trading back and forth between them. They're just trying to buy time, buy space, get the pressure and get the lead. So they have be, they can be the first to respond. Whichever one of them gets that team fight first is probably going to decide it is going to determine who wins it. So it, it very well could. Um, we already see Varus still sitting on a nice 400 gold bounty. We have, it's kind of interesting. We, Baron is now up. Neither team has started it, but they're both kind of posturing around it. They kind of were uh, getting ready for it earlier and decided to kind of back off. Uh, we can see now Hecarim looking for that engage. They found the Varus. Varus is having to flash. This is going to be really, really bad if Banal is not able to escape. They do manage to stun, but unfortunately the Hecarim is going to go under tower. Tarek ulti is going to drop. They managed to take down, get the shutdown onto that Hecarim. Us though is looking to get this hard engage, trying to find the Sivir and the Tarek isn't able to do it. Glacial is able to slow them down just enough. Huge stun coming off of Syndra. PTP forced off of that fight in a way that they absolutely did not want. They are now down a member. Varus is not going to be up for this fight around Baron, and this is going to be really, really big. Yeah, but that's three ultimates expended by a wet team. They won't oh, have for this fight. Nice Aatrox looking for hit it. by the Aatrox, looking for that engage. The Glacial stun is going to come out. Cho'Gath is absolutely massive. Coming in on this back line, Terracold is going to find two members of the side of t the wet team. In the meantime, we have Charu getting brought really low. Tadej looking for that engage. Isn't able to find it. He's having to jump over the wall. Silas trying to find it as well. Chains go just a little bit wide. We see PTP now being forced off of this. Knock up Tadej onto Tadej uh, with the Cho'Gath is going to be using their massive help bar to open up this choke point. Hecarim diving into the back line. The ultimate is already available. Isn't able to find it, but Charu manages to take down the Aatrox. The Darken is no more. That is going to be barren for the wet team. And we've got Elder Drake on the map now, but there's no way for PTP to respond to that. Uh, but they are still low. There is someone backing right now. It is the Syndra backing up. Three members here, fourth one here. Vanal is here. They are going to contest this. They are looking for it. They are got the massive burn onto this Baron right now, but that's not going to be enough. We see Vanal managed to pick up the kill, getting the double kill onto the Tarek, taking them out. And that is going to be huge as the fight has turned around. PTP picking up that Baron. They're not going to rush down for this Elder Drake, and that could be huge. Yeah, wet team just taking way too long to start this Baron. They'd spent so long chasing. They just get run down. Vanal has all the time to respawn, walk over here. Everyone's already fought and battered and bruised. And he just cleans house. A triple kill for him. Baron for PTP. Honestly, like that's that might be the <laughs> the shutters on the on the barn right there. That could very well be the shutters on the barn. Uh, I was not able to see Varus coming up from that bot side. Uh, those auto attacks doing so much damage means that he and Kreen are Kreon is going to be able to 
burn this Elder Drake down to almost nothing, which is hilarious because it's supposed to be one of the tankiest Drakes in this game, and it's just getting two man, <laughs> like instantaneously. That is gonna be devastating. There is very little that the wet team is gonna be able to do against this next push, and that's probably gonna be all she wrote for them. Yeah, I think that's going to be the end of it. I think it's just a march now. It's the victory march for the side of PTP pushing down this mid lane. Wet team just I mean, they're it's not an unrecoverable gap, but absolutely not. If you get that Terra culty down, that's just going to be the Elder Drake constantly spitting out damage, but not able to do anything. That is I'm true, but yeah, but it's just going to depend like like they have to get that Vars pick again and then they have to win another team fight, mm -hmm. but like actually it's, win it hard. That's that's what's going to be take tough it again. Yeah, it's going to be tough. We're seeing this mid lane push. Got Cho there we go. You got Cho'Gath getting the knock up. Sindara being pushed back. Sivir looking for that side angle. Huge stun. Today, Ush is not able to get the engage yet. Sweet spot hit. We have the Cho'Gath hit up in the air with this minion wave. We got the t Now we've got just the single turret. Uh, single cannon minion just doing what they can. Shooting at this turret. Uh, <laughs> trying to do as much damage as possible. Unfortunately, not going to be able to do enough on its own. We got a second one joining it now. We just have Cho'Gath knocking it up constantly. Trying to find something. Today, Ush hitting a sweet spot. Hitting three members of the wet team. We have those Elder Drake damage. There we go. The team is finally able to start hitting the turret, completely ripping it to shreds, not able to survive. These objectives have no health as far as PTP is concerned. And that is just going to be them rotating now after taking the inhibitor to this bot lane. And they're going to try and crack open this base even more. ETP managing to break the base open, managing to take an inhibitor. Probably going to get a second here, honestly. They're just marching down the bottom lane. I don't know if Wet Team can really do anything at this point to stop them. They didn't get anything out of that last hold. And, you know, no, there's any, not any that hard damage. engage by the Wet Team that doesn't manage to actually take someone out instantaneously just means that they're going to be uh, vulnerable to an Elder buff uh, blast to the face. Oh, absolutely. And you already see right there, they're forcing out the Aatrox. Can't, he's going to have got a base to heal. And they've got two inhibitors. I think they're just going to back off that one. No need to push for the third. No need to risk it. PTP coming up huge in our first game of the week. Yeah, this is absolutely hilarious because it's kind of following the prediction of lose two, win two, lose two, win two. Uh, for the PTP pattern, which was kind of uh, something we thought might happen this week. So they're already off to a good start in terms of that. Yeah, I mean, I mean if they can close this one out and win out tomorrow, four and four, yeah, that's a good place to be at, especially at the halfway point in the season. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's yeah. not, you put you right square in the middle of the pack, um, and that is currently what PTP and Wet are fighting for. Yeah, not, you know, being in the middle right now, I think it's a good place to be, you know, you're, you're safe, you knowing that hey, you've got a pretty good shot making playoffs right now, but you know you know you have some room to grow. It's a good position. You don't want to be. I don't think you want to be like the top of the league in the very beginning or middle of the season. I feel like that's a, a position where once if your opponents can figure you out, like it's hard to to grow it, when you're in that position. If, you know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it means that you have some uh, tricks up your sleeve that you're still able to hide uh, uh, potentially and be able to pull out at the last possible second before anybody's able to notice. And yeah, have exactly. A, have exactly. A score. exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, we're talking about picks right here. Varus and Aatrox in this top lane are kind of getting uh, hit a little bit in the meantime. We have Wet trying to jump into this jungle, but they're just basically getting surrounded. As we can see right here, the Cho'Gath getting caught out just a little bit is going to get knocked off. Tarek Oldie's going to get dropped very early in this fight. It's going to find three members. The Chain of Corruption does actually manage to lock down a couple of members. Hecarim is going to be the next one found who's going to be taking so much damage here. They're not able to heal it up from the Death Stance. They're going to get taken down, absolutely shredded by the Aatrox as it brings its uh, axe down and executes them. And that is going to be huge for uh, PTV as they manage to get a couple of shots off here doing so much damage. They're able to just absolutely shred through the massive health bars of the Cho'Gath as well. And that is going to be the final push here coming out. And unfortunately, Syndra is going to be caught out and that's going to be an ace. These Nexus turrets are going to fall. And that is going to be a win for Pentakill, Teemo, please. Yeah, just about 45 and a half minutes. Uh, 
brutal back and forth, but PTP finally manages to close the game out. GG's to them. They move to three and four. The you know the the flow is continuing. The two two lost, two win, two loss. Like you said, it's looking good for them right now. It's looking, looking pretty good. Good so far. Looking good so far. And that is going to be all she wrote. Uh, as we round this up, uh, that is going to be Pentacle Teemo, please, picking up that win. Uh, very, I, I want to say it was a very good performance. They had some struggles there in, in the mid game and they had to drag it out uh, just a little bit. They were able to avoid the scaling. Uh, as we look at this damage here, just look at how much the uh, Let's Do Vanal was able to put out for a 45 minute game and 22,000 really being the highest. That is, it's a lot of health. Uh, that they had to do damage to but it's still I, I feel like it's just kind of one of the like there's a lot of health bars that they had to rip through to get to there yeah no honestly i'm impressed they managed to do it with the comp they did you know I, I i thought like i said i didn't think it was going to work out with the virus it did they proved me wrong very impressive these guys and you know i think they they utilized their comp well they utilized their ability to make quick picks and to move quickly to catch out members of of wet team and just you know they'd get a pick and then they'd force the fight after that i thought it was good you know i was i thought i saw some some a good showing for them today see if they can continue to improve on that continue to grow and yeah you know, I, I, I like i'm glad to see ptp finding their footing already Yep, they found their footing, and uh, that is gonna be uh, all. Like I said, all she wrote for the for the the wet team, unfortunately. And we are gonna take a quick break here, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hop on over to the foesports.com. Check out the connect, and we will have an interview with our victors, Pentacle Teema, please, shortly.